Hello, my YouTube friend. It's early in the morning, I think around six o'clock. I figure we'll take a little walk over by the water, just enjoy the morning. We could... Something about the early morning birds chirping that I just absolutely love. There's something just peaceful and wonderful. When I was a little kid, I'd be scared at night. But you know, at like four in the morning, or five in the morning, when I started hearing the birds chirp, it always brought me so much joy. So it's kind of nice to be out early listening to the birds chirping. Early morning in the neighborhood, there's barely any cars. So in the day, there's just tons and tons of traffic. But there's something about early morning before people are really up for rush hour. Just how quiet it is, just the birds are cheap, chirping. It's just really, really enjoyable to me. Always kind of enjoyed this time of day. We've got the spring flowers coming up. It's beautiful. Spring flowers and a pile of trash. <laughs> That's New York for you both. Piles of trash and tons of beauty. All right, we're just on the pier out by the East River here. It's very calm and peaceful right now. I love it. I can hear the rumble of the highway in Manhattan a little bit. But there's like no one out here. It's really peaceful. I feel like this time of day I can just walk around and kind of, you know, think and not be distracted by everything that's going on. So let's uh, let's chat. All right, it's about 6.15, 6.30 in the morning. I think sunrise is in about 10 minutes. You know, it's starting to get bright right now, but the sun hasn't risen yet. Uh, just really peaceful. I, you know, I thought last night I woke up at about 7. I got to the shop at around 8. I did a little bit of organizing, but I was just too tired to film. Not tired, but you know, like when you first wake up, you just not, you know, I don't want to perform. <laughs> it's sort of like a performance when I get on the camera and I start talking to you guys. So I just... I wasn't in the mood to do it and uh, my wife was tired, she wanted to close. So I just did a little bit of cleanup and we closed. Um, totally dropped off some stuff yesterday, so I might go through that in an hour or so. I might try to set up the office. I'm pretty much done with patrons for now. I think I have 14 mystery boxes to do, but a lot of them are just difficult ones. That I just have to wait for people to contact me and try to work out something with them so I can figure it out. So because of that, I'm going to start clearing out the office now, just so I have room again to do comic videos. Because I haven't done one in a while and I kind of miss it. I love doing the comic videos because those are fun for me. If you're one of my patrons and I haven't caught up with the mystery boxes I owe you, just contact me. And we'll try to figure out what we can do to put a mystery box together for you. So you can actually start seeing the sunrise on some of the buildings. I don't know how well you can see it, but right over there, there's a little bit of sun starting to shine on the buildings, which is kind of awesome. I just love the golden glimmer that starts hitting the buildings when the sun rises. You know, the sun's going to rise behind us that way. So a few videos ago, I was talking about I might have to slow down the daily releases. Um, but you know what? The last three days we've sold so much in the shop. It's one of the best weeks we've ever had. The pops are moving like crazy a lot faster than I thought they were. You know what happened? Last week sales kind of really slowed down a lot. And I got a little bit worried like, oh no, we're not going to be able to sell pops. And so I was saying, oh, I might have to slow down doing videos. Um, but then my wife reminded me that it was the week before taxes were due. And it's always slow that week. Because people are worried about getting their taxes done that didn't do them and all that kind of stuff. And then after tax day sales go up really high because everyone's done dealing with the taxes people are getting refunds and all that kind of stuff so i'm actually not shocked that sales are starting to uh, pick up and i feel like the next few weeks they're going to go crazy so i actually might be looking to buy again later this week like i kind of shut it down for the last week or so did a couple of, you know i had the jays come in on the weekend last weekend just because i've been putting them off for like a month or two and they're just really great people and i love buying from them so uh, i did those i didn't do anyone during the week i think i might have done one small trade during the week but i was trying to avoid it just because you know my sleep schedule is getting all messed up uh but now that stuff is selling and we sold probably two to three hundred pops this week so far uh, there's 10 more boxes on the floor that i want to clear out so if we do another like 200 or so pops this weekend you know saturday and sunday are usually our best day so already having like weekend level sales on wednesday thursday and friday so I don't know what's gonna to happen today. It might be one of the best days ever, or it might just slow down a little bit, or maybe people just decide to come early in the week instead of on Saturday. But it's super cool. 
I like when stuff is selling, then everything works well. I can do videos, I can buy big collections, I can get things done. When it slows down, I just have to put things off and it's a little bit frustrating, but it is what it is. Uh, I also decided I was getting a little bit too negative on my videos. Just like if something bad happened, like, ah, something bad happened. I don't really like to dwell on negative things. I would just mention in videos just because I want to kind of share what my day to day is. And like when there's, you know, not everything is always awesome. But honestly, it doesn't really matter, you know, because every time something bad does happen, something else good happens. And kind of, you know, that day, you know, the day when I had that collection that, uh, you know, I just didn't end up buying just because the lady was just whatever ended up being one of the greatest days ever because I want you know the Jays came in it was great to see them I went to the Queens Comic Party so I'm gonna try to remain positive because I want to be a positive force of energy and I just want to get a lot done and I want to do a lot more walk and talks with you guys around the neighborhood I actually kind of enjoy that it's really nice to get some exercise just clear your mind a little bit walking around that's kind of awesome so what's going to happen today is uh, yesterday I went to bed at 10, so I went to bed at 10 and I woke up at 7. So I slept 9 hours. 9 hours is a lot of time, but remember, I stay up about 17 hours. So for not, for me, 9 hours is like someone else doing like 7.5 hours, because I have an extra 2 hours out of a week. And it just, it just seems to be the way that my system works. The only thing that sucks is now that I've fully cycled out the store hours, I can't help my wife that much and she gets stressed out. So usually on a day like today, Saturday's the day I don't do a lot of stuff. I'm just going to do a video walk and talk with you guys. That's my goal. I might try to work on totally stuff. Not 100% sure. Yeah, actually, I'll probably do totally stuff because, you know, it's just a box and a half. But today I'm just going to relax, try to hang out with my son a little bit, play video games and possibly just try to um, stay up longer than I should. Right. Like I kind of would want to go to bed at maybe 11 today. I'm going to try to go to four or five. So I'm going to push it. This is the day I push it. I usually do this when I start getting to the point where I'm not awake at all during the store hours. And it's that way the first half of the day I can be there if my wife needs me. I'm, you know, I don't want to do anything big. I'm not going to do any buying today. I'm not going to do any sorting or cleaning. Hey, I'm just there if she needs to use the bathroom or something. I can rush over to the store and just watch it for five minutes. But today's the day where I just have to take it really easy. I um overnight so far i did some accounting i worked on uh patrons boxes i finished one more patron up and i'm pretty much done now i'm just trying to clear out the office trying to clear it up so that i can use that space to film again i kind of miss it no it's really windy it's really nice having this new microphone for the camera because i can just chat with you guys and i'm assuming it's coming out nicely which is kind of awesome because I, I just like walking around and talking and when i did it before this it sounded so bad but now i mean this is cool it's just really nice out here just kind of peaceful watching the water flow down the river. You got the city skyline. You have a little bit of highlights of the sun hitting. I guess it looks like if you look over there, you can kind of see a little bit of sunrise coming. Uh, you know what? Let's go walk over to Domino Park. I don't think I've brought you guys there yet. All right. So over here, the pier, it kind of curves around this one building. And then you go through a building, which is kind of interesting. So you have just this, it's just a really nice boardwalk. I, I think it, it goes to the edge of the park, kind of. I think they're going to eventually make it so it goes all the way into uh, Long Island City in Queens. Just so you can take a long, like, five or six mile walk if you want, I think. Not 100% sure of the plan. So I know they just, they keep adding and working on it over the years. And I love it. I think it's just so beautiful over there. Okay. All right, so this part of the boardwalk just goes through the building right here. It's just kind of oddball. But if it's a rainy day, it's kind of nice to sit on the little benches here and just enjoy the weather a little bit without getting soaking wet. You have to take the sidewalk around it to get to the park. And it looks like, oh, I didn't know. There's like a little... Uh, Just like a garden or something right here. That's kind of nice. I thought this was turning into a building, but I guess for now they just turned it into a little greenhouse and garden. Interesting. It says that there's a mini golf here. It looks all industrial, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. That'd be kind of cool, but it is actually a mini golf place. I'm bring the cool kid. He wants to play mini golf. Yeah, there's just like an electronic transformer right here, so I don't know exactly what's going on. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Uh, 
can't really see it so well, but there's just like industrial transformers in there. It's very weird. So this is the old monitor park. And then the old Domino Sugar Factory is over here and they turned it into Domino Park a couple years ago. It's just a really, really beautiful park on the water. It's really nice today. It's a little bit of a walk from where I live. It's a little bit closer to the store, but I, we do like coming over here a couple times a year. During the summer, just like on the really nice days, that's where we'll go. We'll go, uh, we'll go up the ramp, I think. It's kind of cool, this ramp. Just walk across and see the park from above. See over there is the old factory right there. And these are just the old like ship things that they would offload. This building's new. I don't really remember that building being here. It's interesting looking. Very interesting. Yeah, this is the old park we used to come to. But then they turned this whole thing into a park. And it's beautiful over here. Just like all these trees and greenery and benches to sit on. All kinds of nice stuff over here. Right now, it looks like the grass areas are off limits. They must be trying to grow the grass in. There's a seed fencing all around it. Over here, just construction sites or something. Probably more buildings going up right here eventually. And then back on this side, you got the Williamsburg Bridge right there, which is cool. Uh, right here, they have a playground for kids. It's like a really cool kind of looks like the old industrial structure over here which is really neat I used to, uh, when it first opened my son came here a few times I think he's getting old for playgrounds he's like a grown man right <laughs> kids grow up so fast it's crazy and then over here uh, I think it's like a little restaurant I don't know if they're open right now they might open up later you know, during the spring later spring into the summer not 100% sure. Such a beautiful park, though. I love it over here. They have some cool uh, a mural over here, which is kind of nice. I like art in the city. And here's the big sign right there. It says uh, Taco... Taco something. It's whatever the um, restaurant is underneath. So that's the little overbridge that you can walk through. And, oh, I hear the trains on the bridge. And then over here we have this little park area with trees. and It's really pretty over here. And then I think... What's cool is they left a lot of like the industrial stuff. Like these are all from the old sugar factory. Because this used to be the Domino sugar plant over here. But they turn into the park, so they have like little things that are homage to the history, and then that's the big factory right there. That I don't know what they're doing with it, it's just like a shell of a building right now. It's very interesting looking. And then uh, getting a nice workout today, I'm losing my breath a little bit. <laughs> oh, in the summer, they, this is a fountain right here, this just shoots water out of the ground so the kids can run through it. So that's kind of neat and then there's like a little wooden stand that you can sit on just relax enjoy the sunset at night just come over here and check it out which is super cool and on over here there's four old i guess molasses tanks that they left in the park there's just all the traffic going over the bridge and the trains coming by with the subway Across. It's uh, I think it's Jason. Oh, this is fun too. Over the summer, this has little like fog things that shoot out and just shoot you with water. It's kind of fun. It's just like a pier, and then here's just the old uh, I think they're molasses tanks where they would just you know, pour the molasses off the of ships. And then uh, over here, looks like a volleyball court. 
That's fun. Some people let their dogs poop in it sometimes, which is not cool. <laughs> but yeah. That is really neat. And then uh, I think when we get to the bridge, the park ends, but I think they're talking about adding more park just towards the end here. I know they've been raising some stuff too, keep for uh, storm surges and whatnot. Looks like there's some big construction going on right here. That's a cool looking building. Very neat looking. To me, the Williamsburg Bridge is like home. If I'm coming home from a trip and I see the Williamsburg Bridge, I know I'm home. And just uh, the water and just factories and other stuff down this way. I think I'm gonna head over to the store. I'll just show you guys what the store's like and then I'm gonna head home and try to relax for a little bit. Looks like they're filming something else called Radical Media. They're always filming in the neighborhood. I feel like there's a project filming almost every day here. This is a cool old diner that's in the neighborhood that they film in a ton. There's multiple episodes of Daredevil that was in here. Lots of movies that have been in here. Pretty much anytime they need a diner scene, they film in this diner. It is pretty cool. And then the little bookstore that we go to all the time is right over there. All right, I'm walking by my shop. It's uh, 7 a.m. right now, so we open up in five hours. I'm kind of hungry, so I'm going to go get something to eat. And then I'm going to head home and relax until we open. And then when we open up, maybe I'll do a quick tour through just to see what the shop looks like and give you guys an update. I'm actually getting really tired now, though, so I don't know how long I'm going to make it, but I'm going to try. Okay, my plan failed. It got to about 10 o'clock and I just passed out. I just got really tired. It's almost as if my body wants to stay from like a 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. sleep schedule. And that's like, I must be Japanese or something. <laughs> or Chinese or someone from the other side of the planet. I don't know why my sleep gets like this. It's kind of weird. So it's going to be hard the next few days. But I'm going to try to push it. I was just too exhausted this morning. Okay. We sold a ton of pop. I think we sold like 90 pops today, which is a lot. It's a huge part of what I needed to sell. Let's walk around the store and see what's sold. Okay, I think we sold one of those BB-8 gold ones yesterday. We sold two six-inch pops right here. I think my wife said we sold one or two of the double sets as well. So a couple things sold right there. Okay, over here we sold, it looks like three My Hero Academia and like two or three Avatar a couple Pokemon and a whole bunch. This shelf is full too. So a bunch of random anime stuff. Uh, looks like a couple of Back to the Future Pops sold. So we sold a bunch there. On this side, I think, oh, we sold two of the 10 inch Pops that were up there. So that's cool. And then uh, over here, I think we, I think I just moved something from there. So we sold a bunch from here, the good stuff. And then, uh, this is all ravaged. It was a crazy day today. People are digging. Uh, okay, Dragon Ball Z was full, so we must have sold like six or seven right here. Uh, Marvel, there's a space there. We sold a bunch there. We sold a bunch here because this was completely filled here. So we probably sold, ooh, a good 20 or so Marvel Pops. Yeah, and there's space here as well. And Deadpool has some space because I know that was packed solid. So that's really good. Although a couple were just moved over here. So I just we got to shuffle that out, clean it up a little bit. Uh, these boxes we need to organize but we sold about three boxes worth of pops today so there should be space everywhere you just have to organize you know get all the marvel stuff back on the marble shelf but it's all right i like having a little bit of space and let it sit for uh you know a few days before i start loading up again just a little bit i guess we sold some star wars all right and then uh Oh, Disney was pretty full too. I remember I had absolutely no space for more Disney Pops. So it looks like oh, a couple of music ones got shuffled over. So we'll move the music here. And then, uh, so yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 12 Disney Pops sold, which is great because that means I can move a lot of the stuff out of the boxes that were Disney related up to that shelf. Like this guy can go right there. This goes up here. All right, it was a really sweet day in the store today. It's what I wanted to see. Uh, okay, let me get to uh, story time in a minute. Okay, so as you guys know, by the late 80s, I was selling every summer in Cape Cod. 
Uh, I think we were doing garage sales like once a year maybe. And I had the bug. I really liked selling. It was a lot of fun to me as a kid. I could try to, like I would go and find stuff in 50 cent bins at the comic shop and then maybe sell them for a dollar. You know, I wasn't making like huge profits or anything, but I liked the idea of I could buy something and I could sell it for a little bit more. Then I, um, because I wanted to sell more and I sold in Cape Cod, but that was once a year, I talked my dad into taking me to some comic shows. So I think there was two or three times that we went to actual like comic, local just comic conventions to sell. And he always thought it was funny because I was the kid. I was like 12, 13 years old, had all the knowledge. I was the one to selling and he was just helping me. So it was like kind of a reversal situation. So people would come up to the table and start like trying to negotiate with my dad. And he'd be like, he had no idea, right? <laughs> so I was the one who would be like, oh, you know, I can do this price. I can do that price. So that was a lot of fun. And, and then yeah. around the same time, I think my mom took me a couple flea markets to sell. And I think she enjoyed the process of selling as well. So she would bring you a little box of stuff to sell. And that was a lot of fun. And then we got into the 90s. I remember in the 1990s, I started going to the uh, like the five and dime discount store or whatever. And I would try to find a lot of cool action figures that were cheap for like $2. And then I would try to sell them to kids in the neighborhood for five bucks. So, and I sold a lot of action figures. I probably sold like a hundred that year <laughs> or that summer or that spring. I forget how, exactly when I was doing it. And then uh, I was in high school. So by the time I got into high school, I was really into it. I started buying comic books wholesale a little bit. I would buy from the places that would give you like 30 to 40% off new prices. So I was trying to sell people comic books at a discount. Everyone thought I was kind of crazy. Oh, and, and then in the late 80s, I had this crazy scheme that I was going to try to do mail order. I thought it would be really cool if I could sell through the mail. I didn't know how to do it. At the time, there wasn't like online. So there wasn't online selling. So I, I remember looking at the letter pages of every comic book that had people's addresses. So I got a list of like 20 or 30 people. I printed up a list of like the 100 comic books or so that I wanted to sell. And uh, I had my dad get me postage and I mailed out like 30 letters to people. <laughs> I was just like, they're writing letters at the back of the comic books. They must be comic fans. So I, uh, I sent out the 30 letters and a few weeks later I got one order for 10 bucks. It was the coolest thing. <laughs> I spent five or six dollars on postage, but I got an order for 10 bucks and I was thrilled. I was like, yay, I can do this. Not knowing how much work it would be to actually make an income out of it. I remember going with a garage sale with my dad and telling him, uh, getting him to spend a hundred dollars on comic books because they had a whole bunch of old Spider-Man comic books. I'm like, oh, we got to buy all these. And I would sit there and I'd reprice them. I write on the back of the comic book, like the local bookstore. So I kind of ruined them. But in my mind, I was just like, I got to reprice them. So every time the price guide would come out each month, I would buy it and I would reprice the comic books. <laughs> oh, that was a fun time. That was just like the excitement of, you know, trying to make a business out of it. Then in uh, high school, I started buying non-sports cards. I'm not sure how it got started. I, just, I think I had, I was talking to someone about them one day. And he really was getting into them and wanted a bunch of them. So he started telling me the things he wanted me to find. So I would find them. He wanted like three's company cards and I would find a box of that. So I really got into selling non-sports cards for a little bit at high school. They didn't sell really well. But I remember one day I sold him a box and I had an extra like 100 three's company cards. So I was going all over the school and just handing them out to all the different kids and to the teachers. And I remember seeing them on uh, teacher's office boards and stuff. So that was pretty fun. But it wasn't really like a, a business yet. And then I, uh, the end of high school, I, um, I didn't go to my last year of high school. We moved and the commute was just too long and I didn't want to go to the local high school. So I just started, I took a little time off. I was just, I guess, worn out from school. And I just took one class at a local community college, an astronomy class. I got like 110. I absolutely loved it. I love astronomy just so I had a lot of fun with that class. Uh, my mom was remarried, so uh, she had a new baby. So my little brother was born. So I actually took that time to help watch him while she was working. You know, it's kind of difficult sometimes having a, a newborn and still trying to work. So I took that time off. She gave me a little bit of money. So I was watching my little brother. And at the time I was into music. So I think I started buying music and selling it to uh, my friend Jim at the local flea market. Like I would buy stuff from Columbia House and BMG. I get like an extra dollar each. So I'd buy like 100 CDs for 500 and he would give me 600. So I started doing that a little bit. So I figured out how to do a little bit of like wholesale. I wasn't getting rich off of it, but it was just something that I could do to make a couple extra bucks. 
And then I um, I just started going to community college, taking business courses because you know what I decided I really wanted to open up a retail store. I wanted to buy and sell stuff. It's a lot of fun. And I think the best class that I took was a small business class where the whole semester you worked on making a business plan, coming up with all the things that you have to do to run the business, all the expenses, the competition, cash flow statements. I, anyone who wants to start a business, I say take a one semester small business class because that just it really opens your mind on all the accounting, all the different things that you have to really think about. And then while I was in college, I started selling off all my comic books at garage sales over the summer. And I, after like two years, I think it took me, I just, I sold thousands of dollars with the comic books. And then I finally had one guy come in and he offered me $800 for what I had left. And I took it. I do regret some of the comic books I sold because some of it was amazing stuff. I also had a few things stolen from me while I was selling. Just, it's, it happens. Uh, but I took that money and I started buying trading cards to buy and sell. So I started selling at local conventions like once or twice a month. And I would ride to the local like CVS, the local Kmart, whatever local store sold cards. And I'd try to look through the packs to see if like on the back of them, sometimes they're a little bit see-through. So you could see if there was like an insert or something more valuable stuck in the packs. Or I remember there's one box where there was supposed to be one thicker pack that would have like a whole set of inserts. That, and that set was worth like 40 bucks. So I remember kept on checking those boxes and I would buy packs that looked slightly thicker and it just wouldn't have them. So I was like, how much thick? And then one day I found the pack was like three times the thickness. <laughs> it was so obvious, but it was awesome. I grabbed it, you know, so as a college kid spending like $2 on a pack, selling it for 30 bucks, that was pretty awesome. So throughout the 90s, while I was in school, I was selling at card conventions. I, I sold, sold at uh, garage sales on the weekends. And then a local flea market opened up by me. So I started uh, working for them, actually. I got a job helping with the trash removal and keeping it clean, you know, sweeping the streets and removing the trash from the trash cans. So that paid pretty well. I think it was like 60 bucks for four hours of work as a kid. Uh, or like, you know, 16 year old, 17 year old, that was awesome. And then I convinced them to let me sell there as well. So I got a little space. So while I was doing the garbage, uh, my best friend from high school and college, he would watch a little booth for me and would sell trading cards and that kind of stuff for me. So I was selling every weekend at the flea market by that time. I would make money from working at the flea market. I'd make a little bit of money, although I gave most of it to my friend. So I was basically giving him a job and not making money. Uh, and it, it was a pretty awesome time. I remember just going to like the thrift stores and buying tons of stuff. I would buy like Atari games for 50 cents. I'd buy like hundreds of them. And uh, it, it was fun. It was, it was kind of before the internet. So that would be the next story when I first started selling online. So that gets us through the 90s. Okay, so uh, we did a quick organization before uh, we close, just so that tomorrow we're ready. I moved all the Stranger Things pops over here. It's kind of messy, but with the new trailer out and all that, I kind of want to just get them set up because I know they'll start selling in the next couple weeks. Uh, put a few things there. We emptied out four bins of stuff. So there's probably a little residual room for yesterday, or maybe just because I moved out the Stranger Things. But we're down to one, two, three, four, five and a half. Wow, that's pretty good. That's like half of what is here. We had 10 yesterday. So now five, hopefully Sunday's really busy and we clear out another three or four bins. That would be pretty awesome. So this row is almost cleared out. Uh, Marvel still has lots of room. So I'm gonna look to see if I have any extra Marvel stuff that just to the side that's not put out. Uh, all right, we got all the Deadpool there. Star Wars has a little bit of room. Uh, Disney, we refilled up. DC has a little bit of room. So I gotta see if I have extra DC anywhere. I do have extra supply in the basement. I have to double check. Nothing special, just, you know, cases of stuff I have. And uh, yeah, just five boxes. Pretty awesome. I feel like we're making progress this week. All right, I think I'm tired. I'm going to just, uh, we're going to close up. It's kind of late. And this is a long video. All right, thank you so much for watching. Bye.